Hello everybody and welcome to your next uh, Lego 5 uh, platformer made easy tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be creating an input manager class and what this input manager class is going to do it is going to uh, handle all the input in our games whether it's single input continuous input etc etc and we're going to be uh, utilizing this when we're doing the uh, transitioning between the screen states and different screens and such uh, uh, but yeah so we'll to start off what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new class and we're going to call it input manager and a lot of people might be saying oh uh, we can make an input manager uh, a singleton class as well uh, you could uh, but the reason why we don't want to make an input manager a singleton is one we don't want to overuse singletons too much global variables or functions are are never good secondly uh, say for example say we have like two joysticks or whatever and we had them for inputs or something and uh, both of the joysticks they have the same buttons to do the same things first of all uh, for two different players, you would need two different input managers, but with a single tin class, you wouldn't be able to do so. And therefore, you'd run into problems. Uh, there would be other ways to avoid it, but y you don't want to go through all that trouble. So we want to make it so we can at least make more than one instance of the class. Okay. Uh, so firstly, what we what we're going to do in the next tutorials, we're going to make a global class with all the includes that we need. Uh, simply because including the things individually that we need uh, is kind of like a hassle uh, but yeah so we're going to also we're going to need to include uh, the keyboard okay okay so uh, f for our public functions well first of all for our private, uh, what we want to do is we want to get our Allegro keyboard state. And this is what I was saying last uh, tutorial. I was probably going to add the key state to the input manager class. Uh, we could get the keyboard state and have it in our parameters and something, but uh, it makes sense just to have our own input manager have its own uh, independent key state. Okay? So what we're going to have is um, uh, we're going to have functions for single key presses and and continuous key presses. So uh, uh, we'll say is key pressed. We'll have a function for that, and we'll take in an event, and we'll take in a key. And we also need to include the vector uh, library. So we're going to have another one pressed. Uh, so it's an overload. And uh, we're going to say std vector int keys. So that's in case if they want to check for multiple keys and we're going to say is key released and for this tutorial we're only going to be doing uh, single key presses or if we have uh, time then we'll do multiple key presses but I doubt we'll have time and we're going to say is key released like or event and we put EV and we're going to have a vector that stores the keys okay so uh, what we want to do is we need to first uh, we need to create the function. So is key pressed? Uh, we have our event ev and we have our key. And oh, actually, instead of making these void, change these to boolean types. Uh, we're going to we're, we're going to return a boolean rather than just a void, and uh, it'll make more sense to you why we do this after. So we have a boolean. We return a boolean uh, for the overload. 
uh, we have a vector and for we'll just copy this and we'll paste it there and we'll just change the released and yeah okay so for our is key down so we're checking for the single key uh, input uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say if ev dot type is equal to allegro event key down that's why we have the event right there so if this that uh, then we check to see if the keyboard dot key code is equal to the key that we inputted if it is then we return true else we return false okay so for the key press for the overload for the vector uh what we need to do is copy the first part so if ev dot type is equal to allegro event key down uh then we want to say if ev dot keyboard no 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 we need to have a for loop so we're gonna loop till the size so f to the size of the uh, vector and if you haven't learned about vectors then uh, I advise you learn about them because we're going to be using them a lot while um, in the platformer series and vect vectors are just resizable arrays uh, so yeah I'm not going to get into depth because uh, uh, you should already know the basics of C++ before you get into this okay so we're going to loop through all the elements in the vector that's exactly that's basically what we're saying right here and we're going to say that if ev dot keyboard uh, dot key code is equal to keys i then we return true or else we return false okay uh, so if it's any of those buttons then it will return this true and if it's not any of those buttons then it will return false uh, so what we're going to do is copy this one right here and paste at the bottom. Uh, we should have to just say change this to key up. And we have to copy the top one. And paste it in here. And just change this to key up. Okay, so now our function is done. So what we need to do is first of all, go to your screen manager class and uh for the add screen and stuff uh what we're going to do uh go to add your game screen and the pointer to current screen and new screen up there and uh comment it out in the screen manager dot h and for the add screen uh just uh comment all that it out i'll explain all this stuff in the next tutorial but for now just comment it all out or you're gonna get you're gonna get some errors so we're going to need to include the input manager and what, what we're going to do is we're going to create another instance of the input manager and I already have one here okay so we have a input manager and yeah I made a I made a video on this for the previous tutorial but it wasn't really that great so we're going to say if keys pressed uh, we pass in our event and we're going to pass in the key so we're going to say allegro key escape okay and if they press the escape key then we're going to set done equals to true so it's going to close the game window okay so let's run this and try it Okay, so if I press the escape key, it closes the game window. Now, if your window doesn't show up, uh, you can always put uh, AL set window position. So you can say L set, uh, I think it's window position. Yeah, and you put in your display. And you put in a default position you want to show up at. Okay, so uh, if that's because if you don't put that for for some computers, it might show off to the side or etc. etc. So if you don't see your window, then you can set that, and then you, it will set it to a position on the screen where it wants where where it will show up. Okay, uh, so just before this tutorial ends, uh, 
Let's change this to is key released. So right now I'm holding down escape, nothing's happening until I let go and then it closes on the window. Uh, so let's try uh, to do uh, some multiple keys. So um, I'll make one. Uh, I don't know if we get add values like this. Okay, so what we'll, what we'll do is say keys. So we'll say keys that push back. Uh, there's other ways to add it, but I don't remember right now. Uh, so we'll put Allegro key uh down uh we'll push back allegro key escape and that will be it okay so what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our our vector right here keys we'll run this program so if i press down it closes it uh, when I let go of down and when I let go of escape, it'll close as well. So that's how you can do uh, uh, multiple key presses or whatever in your game. So that is it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.